Hello everybody and welcome back to the experimental slash alternative wood finishing series. Now, excuse the slightly crazed look in my eye because today we're going to be playing with... FIRE! <laughs> So scorching is a finish that I have done before in the past and I did a little bit of experimenting with so I kind of know what I'm doing with it and I know how to get quite a nice finish from it. And to be honest this is a pretty easy way of finishing wood but there are a few things that you should be aware of before you do it. Firstly is the timber selection. You want a timber ideally that's got quite an open grain on it so something like ash or oak are ideal for something like this whereas something like walnut, bubinga, uh, sycamore, maple, all the ones that have quite close and dense grain, you're gonna be able to burn them, but you're not gonna be able to get a nice texture from it at the end of it, which is what makes this finish so nice once it's completed. So for this demo, I've chosen ash, and I've been quite selective about the grain on here as well. I've been looking for something with very close and straight grain. Well, actually, the straight grain doesn't matter too much, but it's quite nice to have something where the grain is sort of quite packed together like this, whereas a bit of ash like this sample here, where you've kind of got a bit of a crown figuring going on. It's going to burn well of course but you're not going to be able to build a very nice texture from this at the end of it. And the reason for this is when we scorch this timber the early wood in here which is the softer part of the grain is pretty much going to be removed because this is just going to turn it into dust whereas the late wood the more denser part of the tree is going to stay there but it's obviously going to turn black so as a result you're going to get these sort of undulations along the width of the board which just make it feel incredible. Something like this where you've only got a little bit of early wood sort of peeking through on these cathedral patterns on here that bit's going to go soft but the rest of it's just going to stay hard so you're just going to have in this case a couple of lines going along it whereas this one it's going to be like a wave texture all the way along it feels incredible and the other nice thing about this finish is you don't really need to sand or plane the timber or anything like that i'm working with a rough sawn board here and i guarantee that by the time i scorch that the rough sawn sides on here will feel exactly the same as the plain side on here because once all that early wood's removed and it's all black and everything like that you're never going to be able to tell the difference in fact i'll try it on this face here which is rough sawn out of the sawmill as well and we'll see what we're left with now the key to this is not to set fire to the wood because obviously we're in workshops here, we've got solvents, we've got all sorts of flammable stuff going on. You don't want to start creating a campfire in the middle of your workshop. It's just to lightly scorch the top surface and no more than that. Now bear in mind, this can be quite a messy process. So if you don't want to ruin the top of your bench and stain it all black, I'd recommend getting a protective base or something like that. It also prevents you from accidentally scorching off the edge of the timber and burning a line on the top of your workbench. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop talking. Let's do this. So you can obviously leave it there if you want and you've basically, is that hot? Ah no, right, you've basically got yourself a Zebrano effect sort of thing so you can see that the scorching has kind of caught some of that early wood and yeah if you put a finish over that you'll get a nice kind of distressed look or I don't know, it's entirely up to you of course but we're going to take it a step further. Just being a bit careful here as to not set off the um, fire alarm in the workshop, that would be a bit of a problem. I would recommend doing this outside, especially if you're in a shared workshop like I am. Now this is creating a lot more smoke than I remember. Partly because I did it outside last time, I didn't do it in a workshop. I have got the windows open, but I am so scared of setting off that fire alarm and making everyone evacuate. That wouldn't be the most thoughtful thing I've ever done. So just to be sensible, I'm gonna take this outside and do it out there. Right, so we're back in the safety of the workshop now without any risk of setting off any fire alarms. So let me show you what we got. Okay, so you would have seen when I was scorching that, I wasn't looking to literally set fire to the timber. It was just lightly scorching the surface to make it nice and black all over. But when you do this, you're not just looking for it to turn black. You're also looking, you see we've got these sort of like white lines going up it. That's the early wood, the softer part of the tree turning into sort of like charcoal -y dust. Whereas the late wood, the harder stuff, that's turned black. So when it starts off, it's all gonna go black and you wanna take it that little bit further just until the early wood turns white and I'll show you why now. 
So what we're going to do is get some steel wool or you can use scotch bright or something like that. Just something lightly abrasive that's still got a lot of flex in it that's going to follow the grain. And we're going to use that to remove the early wood in here that's obviously now charcoal-y and soft and it's going to turn to dust straight away. And it's just going to leave behind the ridges of the late wood. So I use steel wool for this and it's very easy. Just scrub it back and forth like that. I'd recommend wearing gloves for this because it gets proper, proper messy. Right, there we go, so that is most of it. All scraped out the grain now, we're not getting much more dust being formed. Yeah, there we go, so that's what we're left with. So I'll do the rest of them now. So with all that dust extracted out of there and it's all nice and clean now, it just leaves you with like the nicest texture when you stroke across the grain, just like bumpy and tactile, yeah, feels lovely. The only issue with this is that if you keep touching it and you leave this as the finished surface, you're just going to constantly get black hands from it. So you need a way to seal it. So for this, I just use Jet Black Wax. This one's by Liberon, uh, it's a special effects wax and it literally just looks like death in there. You can also get away with using a like a brown wax as well with like a dark oak or mahogany. That works just as well because the other thing you want to do is stain the early wood bits that we removed because as you sort of scrub down with the steel wool on things like oak, it's not too prominent on this ash actually but when I did it with oak before it started to expose some of the normal coloured oak in there and it kind of made it look a little bit patchy so the wax filled it in. It still left the texture there but it just made sure all of those pits were jet black still. So I'm going to do it with just a rag. You could also do it with a bit of steel wool, but then you're just going to lift up more and more dust as you go, and it's just going to clog it up a bit. It's going to make it all a nice uniform colour. You can also oil this before if you want. It brings out that black even more. And this one that I'm doing here is the one that was rough sawn from the sawmill, and it has still got a few undulations along its length, but they're all smoothed out. It doesn't feel rough at all. It just feels a little bit like wavy as it goes along. So as you look close at this, you can see that some of the grain that is jet black, but then there's other bits that just have a little bit of unburnt ash poking through. So it does take quite a bit to fill it in. You could probably uh, stain it with a spirit stain or something beforehand as well. That would be quite good. We've got a nice liberal coat on there. I'm gonna leave it on there and we'll buff it all off later, make it nice and shiny. Right, so it's been about 15 minutes, so let's buff them off. So there we go, that is how to scorch wood. So a few things to bear in mind before you start burning all of your projects. Doing this distorts your timber quite a lot because it's cooking one side and the other side is staying as it is. So these bits of material are gonna bow up a little bit like this. So if you're doing a solid wood carcass or something like that, chances are it's gonna open up some of those corners where you've done your joints and things like that. In terms of glue, when you want to join two panels together and you want to scorch both of them, I found that using a cascamite type glue works perfectly fine for it. You might get a little white line going between the two panels where that glue line is, but just get yourself a black Sharpie, color it in and then just smudge it with your fingers and it blends in perfectly. And although I said at the start, you don't really have to sand these panels when you do these, what you should really do is make sure that they're perfectly flat so make sure they're planed and there isn't any ripples left over from a thicknesser or planer, for example, because if you look along the length of here, you can see that there's bumps on there. It's smooth, doesn't need sanding, it just needs flattening out. But it depends on the look you're going for, of course. But yeah, it's a really nice finish. It feels amazing. You could literally just touch it all day. It feels so nice. So there we go. I hope you learned something in this video. See you in the next one.